the Riddle House. The villagers of Little Haggleton still called it the Riddle House, even though it had been many years since the Riddle family had lived there. It stood on a hill overlooking the village, some of its windows boarded, tiles missing from its roof, and ivy spreading unchecked over its face. Once a fine-looking manor, and easily the largest and grandest building for miles around, the Riddle House was now damp, derelict, and unoccupied. The little Hangletons all agreed that the old house was creepy. Half a century ago, something strange and horrible had happened there, something that the older inhabitants of the village still liked to discuss when topics for gossip were scarce. The story had been picked over so many times and had been embroidered in so many places that nobody was quite sure what the truth was any more. Every version of the tale, however, started in the same place. Fifty years before, at daybreak on a fine summer's morning, when the Riddle House had still been well kept and impressive, a maid had entered the drawing room to find all three riddles dead. The maid had run screaming down the hill into the village and roused as many people as she could. Lying there with her eyes wide open, cold as ice, still in their dinner things. The police were summoned, and the whole of Little Hangleton had seethed with shocked curiosity and ill-disguised excitement. Nobody wasted their breath pretending to feel very sad about the Riddles, for they had been most unpopular. Elderly Mr. and Mrs. Riddle had been rich, snobbish, and rude, and their grown-up son Tom had been, if anything, worse. All the villagers cared about was the identity of their murderer, for plainly three apparently healthy people did not all drop dead of natural causes on the same night. The hanged man, the village pub, did a roaring trade that night. The whole village seemed to have turned out to discuss the murders. They were rewarded for leaving their firesides when the Riddle's cook arrived dramatically in their midst and announced to the suddenly silent pub that a man called Frank Bryce had just been arrested. Frank? cried several people. Never! Frank Bryce was the Riddle's gardener. He lived alone in a run-down cottage on the grounds of the Riddle house. Frank had come back from the war with a very stiff leg and a great dislike of crowds and loud noises, and had been working for the Riddle's ever since. There was a rush to buy the cook drinks and hear more details. Always thought he was odd, she told the eagerly listening villagers after her fourth sherry. Unfriendly like. I'm sure if I've offered him a cup of once, I've offered it a hundred times. Never wanted to mix, he didn't. Ah, no, said a woman at the bar. He had a hard war, Frank. He likes the quiet life. That's no reason to... Who else had a key to the back door then? barked the cook. There's been a spare key hanging in the gardener's cottage far back as I can remember. Nobody forced the door last night. No broken windows. All Frank had to do was creep up to the big house while we was all sleeping. The villagers exchanged dark looks. I always thought he had a nasty look about him, right enough, grunted a man at the bar. War turned him funny, if you ask me, said the landlord. Told you I wouldn't like to get on the wrong side of Frank, didn't I, Dot? Said an excited woman in the corner. Horrible temper, said Dot, nodding fervently. I remember when he was a kid. By the following morning, hardly anyone in Little Hangleton doubted that Frank Bryce had killed the Riddles. But over in the neighbouring town of Great Hangleton, in the dark and dingy police station, Frank was stubbornly repeating again and again that he was innocent, and that the only person he had seen near the house on the day of the Riddle's deaths had been a teenage boy, a stranger, dark-haired and pale. Nobody else in the village had seen any such boy, and the police were quite sure that Frank had invented him. Then, just when things were looking very serious for Frank, the report on the Riddle's bodies came back and changed everything. The police had never read an odder report. A team of doctors had examined the bodies and had concluded that none of the riddles had been poisoned, stabbed, shot, strangled, suffocated, or, as far as they could tell, harmed at all. In fact, the report continued in a tone of unmistakable bewilderment. The riddles all appeared to be in perfect health, apart from the fact that they were all dead. The doctors did note, as though determined to find something wrong with the bodies, that each of the riddles had a look of terror upon his or her face. But, as the frustrated police said, whoever heard of three people being frightened to death? 